Welcome to our workshop on social media and marketing. In this workshop, we're gonna cover a lot of different social media sites, and then we're gonna talk about how to use them for your organization and give you some examples of things that you can try doing. We're going to cover some social media sites that really work for student organizations, and then some social media sites that don't really work for student organizations. A common theme for a lot of these social media sites is the use of hashtags. There's two different types of hashtags that you can start incorporating. The first one is a useful hashtag. So these are things like hashtag UCR, which means anyone that clicks on that, you'll see all other posts about UC Riverside. You can also use hashtags that maybe have to do with your interest, your organization's name, or a unique hashtag that you created for an event or a campaign that you're doing. And then there's funny hashtags which really don't serve a purpose, but you can choose to use them if you want. So we're gonna start with the basics of Facebook. The overview of Facebook is basically that it does everything. Facebook is a place to post statuses, pictures, videos, events. You can basically do everything here. Most everyone is on Facebook, but it's a bigger question of who actually uses Facebook. There's also two routes that you can go when you have a Facebook for your student organization. There are things called pages, and then there's things called groups. The difference is that a group can be closed. You have to join the group. So it's meant for maybe planning, or for you to discuss group business. It's not really meant to be outward. It's not meant for marketing. Whereas a page that you like instead of join, you like a page, and that means you'll be kind of updated with statuses and you can RSVP to their events. So as an organization, you probably want to create a page. If you currently have a group, I would consider starting a page. So now we're gonna cover what Facebook pages can do and what they're useful for. The first thing is photos. So you can use photos for things like highlighting your events or highlighting certain members that do something really well. One of the benefits is that you're able to mass upload. So if you have a big event, you can post all 60 of your pictures all at once. Also, you can tag your individual members, which means that people that are their friends will see those pictures, so you'll get even more exposure. Another thing that Facebook pages are good for are posting statuses. Now, a basic status is something like, you know, here's some information about our group. But the best types of statuses are ones that get the other person to engage with you. So you want to do things like ask questions, where you're getting your viewership to actually engage and talk to you. You can also use this as a way to get feedback. Hey, we're having a meeting on Friday. Would you prefer pepperoni pizza or cheese pizza? And get feedback. You can also use these statuses to tag other people or organizations. So if you have other orgs that you're working with, you can give their page a shout out by saying, hey, this weekend we're teaming up with this club to do a fun event. So you're sharing their information and hopefully they're giving you a shout out as well. The last really important thing that Facebook pages are good for are events. So your page can create an event, which is pretty self-explanatory, and you have the ability to RSVP. But anyone that uses Facebook knows that these RSVPs aren't trustworthy. Some people never say yes to anything, but they'll likely show up and other people say yes to every event and will never be there. So don't trust the number of people that RSVP to your event. But because you invited them, or maybe because they did RSVP, they will get reminders and updates about your event as it gets closer to happening. Now one of the big problems about Facebook is that there's an algorithm for how often your posts show up. If you have 100 people that like your page, when you post a status, that doesn't mean all 100 will see your post. So how do you get it to show up more often? This is why it's important to create statuses and photos and events that people are engaging with. So if people are liking photos, if people comment on a status, that means it's more likely to show up for them in the future. Where if you like a page and you see a couple of their posts, but you don't interact with it, you're less likely to ever see that page again. So if you want people to continually see your posts, you want to create content that people are liking, sharing, commenting, they're interacting with at some point. Another cool thing about creating a Facebook page is that you can connect it directly to your Highlander Link account. So go to your Highlander Link profile, and when you edit it, there's an option for what your Facebook page is, and you can just put your URL, and it connects the two together. If you have a group, you can't do this. Only pages can do this because they're public information. A group you have to join to see a lot of their information. In this way, as long as your Facebook page is updated, that info will display on your Highlander link page. So if you're worried about your Highlander link not being updated, your Facebook should be, and so people will be getting up-to-date information. And now we're gonna talk about Instagram. An overview of Instagram, for those of you that maybe don't know, is that it's strictly photos and videos. 
and the videos can only be 15 seconds. So it's a very different type of social media site. In addition to the photo or video, you can also write a short caption which can include other hashtags. And here I want to talk about the frequency of posting. So how often should you post something on Instagram? I would say that the max you want to do is maybe once a day. If you're going through your Instagram feed and there's a page that is continually posting photos, you might be more likely to unfollow that page. So think about quality versus quantity. And now what should you post? So you can choose any type of photo or video, but some of these might be pictures from your events, member highlights, flyers of your events that are coming up. It might be easiest to create a schedule. So say maybe on Tuesday, you post a flyer, where Wednesday, you give a shout out to a member that's been doing a really good job. In this way, it helps you brainstorm what sorts of pictures you're gonna post, and it makes sure that you're posting things consistently. Lastly, is there an ideal time to post? And the real answer is no. There's been studies that as long as it's at some point during the day when people are awake, it usually tends to get the same amount of traffic. A quality post, no matter what time, will get likes. And now let's talk about Twitter. Twitter is basically the opposite of Instagram. Instagram is all about pictures. Twitter is really all about text. What makes Twitter unique is that you must be concise. So you have 140 characters to get across what you're trying to say. So Twitter isn't really the place to get into deep conversations or some big discussion. It's really meant for brief bursts of information. And as opposed to Instagram, Twitter is about frequency. So you have to post more often to be seen. Remember that your followers are often following other celebrities and musicians that are posting all the time. So if you're not posting all the time, you're going to get lost. And personally, I don't think it's crucial to even have a Twitter. But if you do, think about what makes Twitter unique. And with the character count of 140 characters, does your org have an abundance of things that they can even post in that amount? Is there a good reason to have a Twitter? As you can see in some of the examples, it is good for using hashtags and it is good for connecting to other accounts. So retweeting what other orgs are doing or you know, giving shout outs to another org or another campus department, it's really good for connecting them, but it's not good for big discussions. And now let's talk about Snapchat. For those of you that don't have Snapchat, here's a brief overview. Basically, you take a picture and you send it to someone or you post to your story, which is basically like your feed, and people can look at those pictures. If you send a picture directly to someone, they can look at it for a set amount of time, usually between five to 10 seconds, and after they view it, they can never view it again. If you post it publicly to your story for anyone that is your friend to look at, they can review it. But after 24 hours, it is no longer there. So Snapchat is interesting in that everything you post is truly temporary. So how can you use Snapchat to market your events or meetings? You should be having all of your members snap things about what's coming up. So if you have an event on Friday, maybe starting Tuesday, people start snapping pictures or flyers and telling everyone because everyone that looks at their story is going to see that advertisement. Or maybe you're doing a big event, but you want people to still come by. If people are snapping at the event, all of their friends are going to see what a good time they're having. So emphasize that your members use Snapchat. This is virtually an untapped tool for marketing, so really consider using it. Snapchat is definitely more than just selfies. There are, of course, other sites that people use, but for most groups, these sites maybe don't work. So things like Tumblr, some groups have found success, but not a lot of groups have enough of a reason to use it. Yik Yak is a social media site that some groups are using to market their events. The weird thing about Yik Yak is that it's basically anonymous. You post without any sort of account, and there's no tie to who you are. So it's a lot of things like confessions and secrets and disclosures, but some groups do market their events on this website. And then lastly, there's YouTube. So if your group is performance-based, YouTube might make a lot of sense for you to post videos of your performances. But if your group isn't performance-based, would you have anything to post a video of? So these are some sites that might be useful to a small amount of you, but not a lot. So in general now, you wanna come up with a marketing plan. You have all of these sites at your disposal and make sure you use each site for its strengths. So for example, highlight a member on Instagram while maybe you promote a Facebook event the same day. Or maybe you have a countdown to your next culture show on Twitter while use Facebook to advertise your culture show to other orgs. You also wanna make sure that you post frequently. 
If you visit a page that hasn't been updated in weeks, people see it as a dead page. Make sure you use hashtags effectively. So create custom hashtags for your events or campaigns. Make sure that you're always hashtagging UCR so that anyone that wants to see what's happening on campus sees your events and your posts and your pictures. Also consider incentives or contests for those that like or reply or follow, etc. Doing something like this will make it fun and give people a reason to share your site. If you want to chat more about social media and brainstorm more ideas, stop by Student Life at Hub 229 and ask to set up an appointment with your student org advisor. We have a lot of great ideas and we can hopefully brainstorm some ways that you can implement some of these plans. Thanks for watching.